Hey, MBR here, and um, we are back with a brand new rebuild, and today we will be rebuilding the Miami Dolphins. Now, sorry if I'm sniffling a lot and um, coughing and stuff like that. Um, it's currently allergy season, and um, out of nowhere, I just started to develop allergies. Never knew I had them. Never thought I had them. I'm not sure if I'm just sick. Or these are allergies, but they, they seem like allergies, so I've been taking allergy medication. But, um, yeah, so Miami Dolphins, a very, very controversial team right now. I'm not really sure what to say about them. I think if Josh, Josh Rosen's kind of the key to their success, uh, of course, trading for him, uh, trading a second-round pick to the Arizona Cardinals for Josh Rosen. Uh, who was kind of casted out because of Mr. Kyler Murray, or Kyler Murray, and um, yeah, overall, I think Josh Rosen was the the second best quarterback in last year's draft. Um, I personally, I was extremely high on Baker Mayfield. You can go back in my videos and just show, I always said Baker Mayfield was the number one quarterback, and Josh Rosen was the number two, because that's very, very true. I thought I wasn't that big on Sam Darnold. I mean, I'm bigger on Sam Darnold now. Uh, Lamar Jackson was my number three. Sam Darnold was my number four. Josh Allen was my number five. Uh, that's kind of how I ranked them. I, I think that's kind of how they played. I think Josh Rosen has a ton of potential. And they, you can see in the game, 76 star development too. And I think it's just all kind of like... You, you have to be surprised he got... What, three wins? I think it's three wins he got with the Arizona Cardinals for how terrible of a roster that was. How terrible their defense was. How terrible their offense was. And Josh Rosen was able to take them where they took them. Because any other quarterback under center, you, like, you, you saw what it was when Sam Bradford was there. It was terrible. Like, there's no sh It was terrible. Those Cardinals games were unbearable to watch. At least Josh Rosen gave you some type of hope for the future, and then Kyler Murray coming out and stuff like that. That kind of, like, you, you can't really blame Josh Rosen for all that. It's just an unfortunate thing of events with them signing Coach Cliff Kingsbury and everything. Well, it was just an unfortunate thing of events. So... I mean, it is what it is now, but um, I think he's actually better in Miami. Now, looking over the rest of this team, the offensive line is not good. Michael Dietier, I think, could be a very, very valuable asset. Quick development, 73 overall. I think he'd be a very valuable asset in real life. I'm not so sure here because offensive linemen really don't develop. We're Offensive line, we are looking to upgrade every single position except for Lermy Tunsil because Lermy Tunsil is the most underrated tackle in football. He is amazing. He is very, very good. And then, of course, you'd have Mike Gusecki here, who is going to be starting. Had a very strong rookie season. Wide receiver is going to be somewhere we're going to look to upgrade. Kenny Stills and Devontae Parker. Depends if Devontae Parker could actually develop. Kenny Stills is usually a very, very solid wide receiver. And then, of course, we do have Albert Wilson, who actually didn't do bad at all for them last year. And Jakeem Grant is always just Jakeem Grant. Extremely, extremely fast. What, 96 speed? I think 97 speed. 96 speed. Just always fast. Defensively, I think we're looking... We have upside. Uh, Rashad Jones, even though he's been an absolute stalwart with the Miami Dolphins, he is going to be added to the trade block because he's, what, 34? He's 30. And he takes a sharp, sharp decline. So he is going to be added there. We have a lot of young pieces. Uh, Xavier Howard, who really broke out this season, leading the league in, in uh, interceptions. He should be have a better thing, but I think he can definitely be a star cornerback for us in the future. Uh, Eddie Rose is kind of a holdover that they got. Uh, Bobby McCain? Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure about Bobby McCain. Then they have Cordell's Tankersley. Uh, cornerback is going to be a thing of need. Safety is not. Mink Minka Fitzpatrick. I like TJ McDonald. He can do for right now. Uh, just secondary is going to be a need for us. I actually think I might move Minka 
down as a cornerback spot. Because that's really where he played. He played a lot of slot cornerback. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Even though he is technically a safety, I'm going to move him down to cornerback because I think that's where he plays better. And that's where he develops a lot better. So, we're down to a 75 after that because he he's only an 80. But I think that's just going to be better for us in the long term. And then move Eddie Rowe up to safety, which is, again, a lot better for us. That means we have better players in both positions, which I can't be mad at. So, yeah. He was a free safety, yeah. Yeah, he's a free safety. But I think it just makes our defense better for the long term. So, yeah. Linebackers, I think, can... Um, I think they're fine for right now. If they can develop, that's great. Jerome Breaker, I think it'd be a good. And so can Roquan McMillan. Just, they need to develop. Quick development, I'm pretty sure quick development too. Normal. I don't like normal, but I'll take it. And then uh, Charles Harris, I really need him to develop. This guy was a first-round pick two years ago now. He didn't really play that much his first year. Second year, he started to play a little bit more. We really, really want him to develop. Hopefully, he does well. Where did he... Missouri. I remember him coming out. I remember when he came out. Dolphins made the playoffs that year. And he came out. And this guy was looked as like a steal in the draft. Him and... Um, Taco Charlton. No, not Taco... Tr Tack McKinley. Tack McKinley was an absolute beast. Tack McKinley is an absolute beast. That's what we're hoping Charles Harris can be. Of course, Christian Wilkins, who they got an absolute steal here. I love the Christian Wilkins pick. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Devon Godshaw, who I think, if again, if he can develop, can be a very, very good player out of LSU. And then I think just getting one more pass rusher is going to be our biggest thing. But, um, yeah, offensive line is going to be fixed and free. Everything. Just everything. All assets are going to the offensive line. I think Isaiah Prince could actually be a good signing in real life, in real life, but he's not going to develop here. So playoffs, I don't know. N probably not. Probably not because we have three really overpowered teams, but also the Dolphins are a little bit an overpowered team in the sim. But we'll see. We will see. So without further ado, um. I'll see. I actually want to put Ryan Fitzpatrick on the trade block, too, just because I want to see what I can get for him. But uh, if we don't get anything for either of the players, I won't show anything. But if we do, I'll show you guys any trade. Okay, so we'll be trading with Rashad Jones to the Carolina Panthers. I want to trade him out of conference. Even We got this really, really good uh, trade offer from the Pittsburgh Steelers. But that first-round pick... That's not realistic. That's not very realistic. So, we're going to go with the Panthers, which I actually think could be pretty good. I was going to go with Dallas at first, but I think the second-round pick this year would help us a lot more with the offensive line. And um, Anthony Brown, I'm pretty sure, becomes a free agent after, like, the first or second year. So, we're going to be trading him to Carolina. Hopefully, he's successful there. And we'll be getting a second, a next year's sixth, and a next year's seventh in return. Overall, I think good trade for the both of us. All right, so we don't make the playoffs our first year. We kind of expected that. Um, I upgraded everybody. There really wasn't that many upgrades in the offense. Like, on the offensive side, it does not look like we did very good. No one decreased, but it doesn't look like we had very much increases. We go 6-9-1, and one, not exactly the best. Josh Rosen, I need the touchdowns to be up and the interceptions to be down a little. Like, I have to blame this one on the offense. The offense line is terrible. 360, uh, 3,600 yards, 15 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 59% completion rating, 44 set. Like, that can't be happening. Kenyon Drake had a decent year, uh, 928 rushing yards, 13 touchdowns. They gave the ball to him a lot. Albert Wilson, over 1,000 yards, 4 touchdowns, 772 and 6 for Kenny Stills, 772 and 0 for Mike Gusecki, 653 and 5 for Devontae Parker. I th this offense in general needs a makeover very, very soon. Tackle leader is going to be Jerome Baker. Tackles for loss is going to be 12 by Devon Godshaw. He's probably going to lead us in sacks, too. No, Charles Harris. I like it. 7.5 sacks, 6 for Devon Godshaw, and 6 for Christian Wilkins. Interceptions, 4 from Eric Goreau. That's perfect. 2 from Xavier Howard, 2 for Jerome Baker, 2 from Micah Fitzpatrick. That's exactly what we want to see. Yearly rewards. Drew Brees is going to be the MVP. 
Um, in the NFC, it is going to be Drew Brees once again. Noah Jamar, team defensive player. I mean, the AFC. What am I doing? Tom Brady is going to win Offensive Player of the Year. Nobody from our team. Defensive Player of the Year is me, Dante Hightower. Nobody from our team. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Baker Mayfield. Josh Rosen, hey, coming in at number five. Even the Rookie of the Year is going to be Tremaine Edmonds. And then Minka Fitzpatrick. And of course, there's going to be a mix of both rookies from this year and last year because of his Madden 19. So that's, of course, going to happen. But overall... I think this is a great rebuilding year. We can get some people retooling for agency a little bit. And I think we'll be on a roll. I like Kenyon Drake at halfback. Maybe add one more wide receiver. Maybe depending on whose contract's up and just fix this offensive line. Defensively, I'm the secondary actually played really well. So I'm looking to get some more pass rush for getting a right end and maybe another right outside linebacker. Kiko Alonso's contract is a lot, a lot of money. Okay. So, we're going to be bringing some talents to South Beach here. And um, the first one is going to be Josh Gordon. Now, Albert Wilson is a little bit on the older side, and he's already regressed. So, Josh Gordon will come in, be debatably a number one receiver for us. He has quick development. He is 28 years old, though. So, he maybe might get up to a 90. But having Josh Gordon would be really, really big for us. Just another electric wide receiver. His stats are still just good. Stats are good. 92 speed, 91 acceleration. Just all around good stats. Can't be mad. 85 overall. And Jack Muhort here, even though Michael Dieter, he had no progression his first year. I think he's just going to kind of be there, even though I think he'll be a really good part of the offensive line. In real life, just development, stuff like that, just doesn't really work here uh, for offensive linemen. So Jack Muhort, age 27, is going to be... The other person we're going to try and get. Hopefully we get both of them. We are the Miami Dolphins, so we usually get everybody because of, you know. That's the best part about being the Miami Dolphins. I don't I don't have to worry about all these other free agents getting signed, like 150 points or something like that. I was thinking about getting Le'Veon Bell, because bringing Le'Veon Bell to the Dolphins would be super dope. We're still the number one on him. Bringing Le'Veon Bell to the Dolphins would be super, super dope, but... I just don't think that is really realistic. So I'll come back to you guys when we do sign everyone, and I'll see you guys in the draft. Mekhi Becton is going to be our pick. Now, I really wanted Trey Smith, but he wasn't here at number 10. We have two second-round picks where I think we could get some pass rushers or, or some extra offensive linemen because I really want to make this offensive lineman based. So Mekhi Benkin. Benton is going to be our number one pick. 78 normal development with a scheme fit. I will take that. I will take that to the house. That's better than the right tackle we have right now. Now, we all we really need is a center, and I have three centers scouted that I really like in the second round. That's a big pickup for us. Okay, so now I don't have this guy scouted, but I really, really like him here. Daryl Williams. Uh, out of Mississippi State. He looks to have a pretty good combine for offensive linemen. Overall, I can't get mad. I want Daryl Williams here with the number 10. Number 10 pick in the second round. He's a 75 star development. That is perfect. I'm be changing. I might be changing the scheme of our offense soon. So that's really big for us, having that center there. And I think we finally have a decent enough offensive line in front of Josh Rosen. I think we could be some sort of successful right now. Overall, extremely, extremely good pick. Okay, so we're going to pick one more guard here because we need one more spot on our offensive line. And again, I like this guy's bench press. You know, I'm going to go old school. Bench press, good uh, combine, haven't scouted him. Brandon Bowen, out of Ohio State, 75 normal. Not very good, but he's still a starter, so I can't be mad. Um, I guess I can't be mad he's a starter. I'm pretty sure, I think, maybe. We'll see how it turns out, but... Um, another decent pick here in the second round okay guys this is what the team is looking like going into year number two we're gonna have three rookies starting on the offensive line and daryl williams uh becton and brandon bowen i'm really hoping daryl williams and becton could you know progress and if bowen does bowen does bowen doesn't bowen doesn't we saw one of the best left tackles in football here in Lermy tunsil and then jack muhort here too i think our offensive line has gotten a lot better 
and it's going to get better with progression from Daryl Williams and Becton too. Uh, tight end, we're going to have Mike Gesecki starting, and then wide receivers, Josh Gordon, Devontae Parker, and Kenny Stills. And then, of course, Kenyon Drake almost had a 1,000-yard season last year. He's going to be our starting halfback with Josh Rosen being starting QB. Defensively, we're going to have Jerome Baker, Raekwon McMillan, and Kiko Alonso again. I really want to get rid of this guy's contract, but I think it's over after this year. If I'm not mistaken, it should be over. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure... Two years remaining. Oh, uh, if my midseason were doing bad, I think he might, just might be eated or next season because that contract is a lot of money. Then we're going to have Eric Rowe and TJ McDonald at safeties. And our secondary did not play bad last year with Minka Fitzpatrick, Bobby McCain, and Xavier Howard. Did not play bad at all. And then we're going to have uh, Pearson, is a rookie I actually drafted in like the fourth or third round, who's an outside linebacker. And he came out to be a 77. I didn't, re I didn't put it on recording. Came out to be a 77 normal, which is pretty good. Then we're going to have Jerome Baker, Roquan McMillan, Kiko Alonso. Uh, this guy, Taber, Taberia Pearson, if you guys know who that is. Devon Godshaw, Christian Wilkins, and uh, Charles Harris. Charles Harris, right? Yes. Again, if one of them could have a breakout year again this year, that would be humongous for us. I think this team's definitely on the cusp. We did a lot of work on it. If we don't make it this year, next year is going to be our year. But overall, I think we have a pretty good team. We can go decently far if Josh Rosen can take us there. The question is, can Josh Rosen take us there? We'll see. All right, you guys. So we did not end up making the playoffs this year. I already upgraded everybody. It looks like we did better. We went 7-9, and nine, and we could have damn well won a wild card spot or something. Something at least stats Josh Rosen having a lot better season for what it looks like 3,500 yards 27 touchdowns 10 interceptions I will take that because that's kind of a sophomore slump numbers too because all quarterbacks really have a sophomore slump and especially because Josh Rosen started in his rookie year technically so I'll take that completely 63% completion rating and uh, Only 39 sacks given up is perfect Kenyon Drake still just inching closer and closer to that thousand yard mark receiving the ball be 888 for albert wilson and 12 touch why is he getting so many targets he's our fourth receiver oh he's in, he's starting the slot i completely forgot about that um mike Gusecki, 816 and four 709 and three for josh gordon 553 and one for kenny stills that means they completely phased out Devontae Parker. That's not good. That does not need to happen. Wow. That's really, really good. Only 11 sacks given up by Laramie Tunsil, and that's the highest on our team. Roquan McMillan with 120 tackles. Tackles for loss. 15 by Christian Wilk. That's what I like to see. 6.5 sacks for the rookie Tarbarius Peters. Pearson. Uh, four interceptions for TJ McDonald. Two for Jerome Baker. Two for Minka Patrick. One for a few other players. Yearly rewards. Tom Brady's going to the MVP. Nobody on our team in the AFC. It is going to be Tom Brady once again. Nobody from our team. Defensive player is going to be Miles Garrett. Nobody from our team. Offensive rookie of the year is going to be Nijay Harris. No Dolphins. Defensive rookie of the year is going to be Marco Wilson. With really six sacks and at least get you on the short list. That's nuts. That's nuts. We know he's a defensive rookie of the year. We know it. They don't, but we do. But um, going into the season, honestly, our offensive line looks good. Um, I don't really want to mess up anything too much. Maybe adding another guard. Maybe. But honestly, our offensive line looks pretty good. Defensively, um, I think just getting rid of Kiko Alonso's contract, getting another safety, maybe another cornerback. Um, and I might get a new halfback. Because if Kenyon Drake really isn't progressing the way that I need him to, I might just get a new halfback who can hit that 1,000-yard mark because you really need that if you want to make the playoffs in the sim. But we'll all see. We'll see when we get it all done and over with uh, during free agency. So we are going to be <clears throat> trying to get two guys here in free agency. The first one is going to be Jay Ajayi. Uh, Kenyon Drake's contract is up. He did really good for us, but just... I just couldn't crack 1,000-yard mark. We need it. I'm hoping J.H.I. It can. Um, I tried to look at his previous stats. It doesn't let me. I don't enjoy that. But, hey, 
We'll take a JJ. And Anthony Brown, who we almost traded for. We almost traded for him. Remember, if you guys do remember that a little bit, in the beginning of the video. Um, like I said, he comes a free agent like year one, year two. We can get him there, and we're gonna grab him up here. We'd probably have to pay him more if um, if we grabbed him then, because then we would be trading away quite a little bit. Um, and then also a Kiko Alonso contract. Kiko Alonso contract is right now trying to get taken off the books. Uh, I think we're still... Ooh, wow. Okay, the Colts just decided to jump right in, but you, we're the Miami Dolphins. You don't mess with the Miami Dolphins and money, my man. It's like messing with the Yankees in the sim. 102. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Let's go like that. We got him. We got him. All right, so uh, I'll see you guys with our first pick in the drafts because I think it's probably the only one I'm going to take. All right, so with our first pick, AJ Dillon. Um, JJ did not decide to sign with us, and it was actually good because I looked at his stats from last year. Once he did sign, he only had 719 yards. So we're going to be getting fresh with AJ Dillon's a 74. But he does have that quick development. He is, uh, what's it called? He's a quick development. You know, I think we might have to do running back by committee this year. That Those are some bad stuff. We're going to go into the second round. I'm going to take you guys with us. I'm hoping the second half, because usually halfbacks are not drafted. And it looks like the other halfback who was on the board was. We're going to go one more halfback. Stefan Carl. Carr. Okay. So we're in prob... I'm Kiko Alonso trade is yet to happen. Watch out for the Kiko Alonso trade, because it might be pretty big. Okay, so this is going to be our Kiko Alonso trade, because we really need to get him off our books. Kiko Alonso for a next year 7th round draft pick. Good. I... Uh, uh, all right. I thought we were going to be able to get more from him, but I guess we couldn't. But we're looking to have a pretty decent team that's coming together. We're 79 overall. Not very many upgrades, not very many downgrades either. Um, I'm going to have to go out and try and find a replacement right here. And then I'm going to bring Bobby McCain up to safety. So we have two good safeties. And our defense just overall would be better if we brought him up to safety. Do we have anybody over a 90? We don't. That's not good. I've been really trying to develop the talent the Dolphins already had on here, but it's hard. This might be a full five-year rebuild. We have Zach Moss. I don't want Zach. I want A.J. Dillon to start. He has that quick development. He's a rookie this year. I thought, oh, God, we need a big free agency period next year if we don't make the playoffs this year, which we, we're inching closer and closer. And my controller stopped working. But we're inching closer and closer every single day. We just need, we need a little push. We need a little push. If Josh Rosick have a big year, I think we make the playoffs. But I'm hoping this offensive line could stay up like they did last year. And overall, we just have another good year. So I think with all that said, I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Okay, so we didn't make the playoffs again this year. Um, second in division, but it was six, nine, and one. Right now is the time we have to win our division. Josh Rosen does not look like he had a bad year. Thirty-eight hundred yards, twenty-eight touchdowns, seven interceptions, with sixty-one percent completion rating. It's not bad, not bad at all. Uh, he also didn't get sacked very much either. AJ Dillon having himself a rookie season for the ages, two sixty-four and nine hundred and four yards and nine touchdowns. That's big. Receiving has been lackluster. Albert Wilson has been our best receiver because he's coming out of the slot. 9, 18, and 8. 9, 14, and 8 for Josh Gordon. 7, 43, and 5, and 7, 36, and 6. I paid Devontae Parker. I have to get him in there. I have to. And it's just, they're not letting him. This offensive line is playing amazing right now. Defensively, 110 tackles for Jerome Baker. Tackles for loss, 19 for Christian. 14 sacks for Tabaris Peterson. Tell me anyone thought that 14 and a half sacks, if he's not one of the defensive players here, and he had how many tackles for loss? 18 tackles for loss. Tell me he's not the defensive player of the year. Interceptions, two for Jerome Baker, two for TJ McDonald, two for Xavier Howard. Please tell me he's not. Please tell me if he's not defensive player of the year. I'm going to be so mad. Saquon Barkley is going to the MVP. In the AFC, Marcus Mariota is going to win it if he's not. 
You're j is he not even here? No way. 14 and a half sacks. Can't get you a defensive player of the year nod. Danger of Ethan Jerry's. Are you kidding me? Can Jerome Baker is in there. 14 and a half. That's nuts. Offensive rookie gives me JT Daniels. Well, AJ Dillon coming in there at number two. Nuts. If he's not D line, he has to be here. He's a second. You're joking. That is nuts, man. That's nuts. I don't know how. Going into the offseason, honestly, receiver is going to be somewhere we're looking to get. Kenny Sills starting to get. He's 29. He hasn't been as effective. Uh, Josh Gordon has been a good number one. At least this year he was. Uh, Devontae Parker, I want to get a lot more touches. Albert Wilson has been good for us. But it's like, you know... So I want to get someone better in the slot. I'm just looking to upgrade positions because we have a lot of guys here. But there's guys who are not progressing. We need guys to progress. We don't want to stay where we are. We want to progress. So I might be getting rid of a few receivers, bringing in a few depending on who's in free agency, who's not. But, um, yeah, that's kind of my plan right now. All right, guys, we're going full LeBron James on the heat here, and we're bringing some talent down to South Beach. First one is going to be Landon Collins here. I just really want Landon Collins. I really want Landon Collins. And uh, I didn't sign back Eric Rowe, so we got two safeties. Um, Cooper Cup, who would be the perfect slot receiver for us. P absolutely perfect slot receiver for us. Uh, apparently, our scheme, we target the slot a lot more. Albert Wilson didn't resign. Neither did Kenny Stills. So I get Cooper Cup. And then we'll, on the outsides, we'll have Josh Gordon and Devontae Parker. Which both would be pretty big. I might actually add another wide receiver in Troy Dory, Josh Gordon. We're not sure yet. Demonte Casey's here uh, at free safety for us. To, I got. I'm trying to pick up Dante Hightower in a one-year deal. I'm not sure if it's going to work out or not. If I can get him on a one-year deal, that would be perfect, so we can move him down into the edge rusher. And then Matt Milano just to get the other outside linebacker spot. All these would be extremely big signings. I doubt that we get all of them, but. If we do, that would be humongous. Like, that would be big. That would be, oh, God. Come on. So, accepted, accepted, accepted. Rejected by Cup. That was the one that we really needed. Oh, that was the one we needed. Is there any other wide receivers on the market? He was, like, the, really the only good wide receiver. He was really the only good wide receiver on the market. That, that's really tough. That is very tough. Oh, that puts us in a bad spot. That's going to put us in a spot where we're probably actually going to have to make a player-for-player player trade, which I don't like to make in these realistic rebuilds, but I think we're going to have to make one in this situation. We're, we're giving up a lot here. Josh Gordon, a first-round pick, and Bobby McCain to get Michael Gallup on our team, a 93 overall receiver. We need a big-time receiver. It's kind of needed. And then I'm still going to sign someone out of free agency. Like, oh, Cooper Cup not re-signing really, really hurt. This defense is a lot better. The defense is good. But Cooper Cup not signing really, really hurt. So I'm going to have to look for another receiver in free agency now. I'm probably going to go Zay Jones. Yeah, we are probably going to get Zay Jones. I'm going to go and make a bid for him, and we're probably going to get him. And so, I guess I'll see you guys start of next season. Alright guys, so we didn't make the playoffs in this year. Doesn't look like we did the best. Uh, we go 4 and 12. God damn it. Josh Rosen, career high in passing yards, but touchdowns and interceptions, both terrible. And our offensive line gave up a lot of sacks. AJ Dillon, terrible year. Terrible year. Mike Gusecki leading us with catches with uh, 77 <laughs> yards. Michael Gallup showing showing his worth here. 918 and 4, 884 and 6 for Devontae Parker, 844 and 6. Mike Gusecki and 720 and 2 for Zay Jones. Blocking. Oh, well, Lermy Tunsil having a little bit of a bad year. Well, 11 is not bad. Matt Milano is going to lead us in tackles with 129 tackles for loss. Be 14 to, by Devon Godshout. 10 sacks by Christian Wilkins. 6.5 by uh, Dante Hightower. 6 for Terrius Peterson. 3 for Landon Collins. 3 for Megan Fitzpatrick. 2 for Jerome Baker. 2 for Monte Casey's. 
Um, not a terrible year. I mean, terrible year record wise, but it looks like we did decent. Marcus Mariota is going to the MVP. Uh, in the AFC, it is going to be Marcus Mariota. Nobody from our team. Defense players me. Uh, who was that? Miles Jack. Nobody from our team. Okay. So, what I'm going to be looking to do is we're just going to upgrade, 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 upgrade. Is all we can do right now. It's just upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. And uh, usually it does happen. We bring a lot of free agents. It takes a year. So next year is going to be our final year. Hopefully we can make it to the playoffs. I'm expecting a playoff berth. This team is good. Let's make it even better throughout the offseason. And I'll see you guys in free agents. The free agents we're going to be going for. Rashawn Gary, he was here in free agency. There's no way. 25, I think, quick development. 86 over. I just, I, I need to. I need to. Uh, he can fit in defensive line on the left hand side because we don't have uh Deontay Hightower anymore I decided to let him go and James Washington here just another wide receiver just because we need another wide receiver because Josh Gordon's wait no we don't have Josh Gordon anymore who do we have as our third wide receiver who's our third wide receiver I don't even know who our third wide receiver is hold on Devontae Parker I mean he did good last year he didn't do bad but I just feel like you always need to upgrade the wide receiver position in this game, and especially in the scheme fit stuff, you know. Do I want James Washington? We're, we're going to upgrade. We're going to upgrade. So let's see if these two want to come here. I noticed how I didn't go after, like, Darius Leonard or something, because I want to save those guys for... I'm going to be doing a Colts rebuild soon, stuff like that. I'm going to be trying to redo a few rebuilds. I'm, I'm going to be pre-recording a ton, because in the summer I'm going to be going, Rashawn Gary... God damn rejected. It's terrible. It's actually terrible. That was the, the ones that we've needed. They've decided just to reject. Okay. So, this is what we're going to do now. Breland Speaks. We're going to go for Breland Speaks. Remember when the Chiefs drafted him and everyone was like, Breland? Who's Breland Speaks? He was like a third. They drafted him in the second round. Pretty sure they drafted him in the second round. I'm decently sure it was a second round pick they drafted him with. We're going to give him the absolute house because it's our last year. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the second round they drafted him in. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. But, yeah, I remember everyone drafting him. They're like, what? Who is Breland Speaks? Isn't that? He didn't have a half bad rookie season. Accepted. So, we're going to be switching him to the other side. And I think we're going to have a pretty good team next year. I'm just going to give you guys, because I'm not going to be doing anything else to this team. Like, I'm doing absolutely nothing else to this team. This team's perfect where it is. <laughs> Ooh. But this team's perfect where it is. Uh, the final off is going to be Josh Rosen at quarterback. A.J. Dillon at halfback. So I, I trust this guy. I trust him. Why is it not letting me? Let me reorder these. I'm going to reorder it. A.J. Dillon is going to be our halfback. We're going to have Michael Gallup, James Washington, Zay Jones, and Devontae Parker. They're uh, wide receivers. Tight end is going to be Mike Gusecki. The offensive line, Jack Muhart starting to go down a little bit. But overall, we've held solid with not a very good offensive line. Um, cornerbacks have been looking good. Minka Fitzpatrick, A.J. Brown, something Mullins, a Davian Mullins. And Xavier and Howard, our cornerbacks have actually developed really well. We're lucky. Uh, Landon Collins and Monte Casey's at the safeties. Then we're going to have right outside linebacker Matt Milano, Rocco McMillan, and Jerome, Jerome Baker, right? Yeah, Jerome Baker, who all these have developed perfectly. I can't say anything else. We have gotten really, really good development. So let's just see now. I have a lot of confidence in this team. I hope we can do some big things, which I think we can. So I'll see you guys at the end of next season <sighs> all right guys <clears throat> so we end off the year not we'll end off the rebuild not making the playoffs we go six and ten <sighs> all right 3600 yards 31 touchdowns 10 interceptions 65 percent that's not a bad year for josh rosen at all rushing why is zach moss starting aj dillon is my starting running back that makes zero sense that kind of makes me mad oh 11,000 yards from Devontae Parker. He had a breakout season. 
Seven, twenty-two, and four. Six, thirty-three. Fuck. Like, I, I tried. I tried to make this. This team, oh my god. We, and our offensive line just decided to crumble. <sighs> offensive line decided to crumble. Tackles for loss. Fifteen by Christian Wilkins. Nine sacks. He became kind of a beast by tail end. So did Tabaris Peterson. Absolute monsters. Interceptions. Three for Landon Collins, two for Jerome Baker, two for Anthony Brown, two for Minkups Patrick. Oh, man, we had some good seasons, just weren't able to put it all together. Sam Darnold's going to the MVP. In the AFC, it's going to be Baker Mayfield. Nobody. Defensive player year, it's going to be CJ Mosley. Nobody from our team. And then rookies are rookies. That's really, really upsetting. We were unable to make the playoffs in the Miami Dolphins. I think they actually have a chance. To, they're, they're brewing something. They're brewing something down there in South Beach. I think they're going to be really good really soon. But can't really do anything about it now. If you guys did enjoy this episode, remember to go leave a like. Go subscribe. It always helps me as a growing channel. Uh, sorry about uh, not making the playoffs. I tried my best. Definitely could have built a better team. But I really just wanted to develop the talent on this team. And that went a little bit hard. It's back end of Madden right now. Um... I really want to post MLB The Show, you guys. I, I'm going to try to ease into there right now. It's like mid-baseball. I love MLB The Show. I love playing MLB The Show. So I'm going to kind of ease into it. I'm going to have a live stream up a little bit later. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoy this, remember to go leave a like, go subscribe. Always helps me as a growing channel. And uh, I'll see you guys in our next